or good morning wherever you are once again and welcome to another edition of Wrestling with Faith. Uh, this time we have got uh, Gaz Thompson from GTM Ministries. Uh, Gaz, you've already been prepped about me and about the way I do these podcasts by your good friend Emma, aka mm-hmm. Blue Glasses Girl. So most important question I'm going to ask you today, my friend, is how are you doing? You know, considering how busy and hectic my schedule is, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Um, I would say you asked me that question a couple of weeks ago, and I told you I was very tired, very stressed, dealing with a lot on my plate. But uh, I managed to uh, have a, a night away, get, get a trip to a spa, have my back massaged. My wife paid for it. She's got me and my mate together. I'm like, you need some guy time. You need to sort yourself out. And just sent me away. That is, is top marks for Beth, my wife. She is a phenomenal woman of God. And she knows how to look after her husband. Awesome. And, um, Praise God for that, man. Praise God yeah. for that. Absolutely. And so um, now I'm refreshed. Ready I was going to gonna say. Two weeks ago, oh, I'd have been flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got you now and not two weeks ago. Um, so, yes, mate. Um, obviously, most in, uh, you know, the most important thing I've already asked you. And we're going to discover a lot of things. Um, guys, we touched upon it very, very briefly. GTM Ministries. Tell us all about GTM Ministries, where it's based. What does it do? What does it offer? And who is it available to? So GT Ministries was an idea that was born, I'd say, maybe five or six years ago. I was at New Wine and I went into a seminar by the guys called Tough Talk. I don't know if you know them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Christian group of guys who they do powerlifting. And as part of that, they share their testimonies. Essentially, the powerlifting is the hook. People come for the powerlifting, and while they're sat there watching that, they've got no choice but to listen to these guys. Yes. We're talking London gangsters and geezers with stories to tell of Jesus in their life. And um, they just lay their testimony out flat in front of people and do a gospel appeal. And while I was in there, I thought, that is a phenomenal idea. What can I do with that? And I've been a wrestler for 10 years now. Um, I've been touring the country. I've been running events. I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I thought, hang on a minute. Wrestling is my hook. People can come to watch the wrestling and then smack bang in the middle while I've got their attention. I can tell them my testimony. I can share with them about what Jesus has done in my life. And so GT Ministries was born on the back of that. Um, So I was working at CAP at the time, Christians Against Poverty, and I had a couple of connections with local churches. Um, We did an event at Mowbray Community Church in Harrogate. um, And it went down a storm. They loved it. People got saved. People came to faith. um, And it was just a great event. And then I was invited down to um, Christian Vision for Men's Conference, shared my story there for the two and a half thousand blokes, did a training event, more people came to faith, went to a local church in Leeds, 500 people came through the door, shared my story, people came to faith. And it's just grown and grown and grown from there. So we're touring the country doing events for churches. Um, We've also got a base in Bradford at Fountains Church where we run monthly events. Um, And they're like proper wrestling events with a very subtle kind of, christian influence and so we name the the events after books of the bible we have certain threads and themes Um, and then in april we're actually launching a wrestling church so this 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 is the big thing uh in april so we're gonna have worship word and wrestling um we've got four people from our training school who are going to get baptized at the event uh, people who come to faith through through my training school which i'm also based in bradford which emma comes to um and um and and that that's what we're about I, i do men's events i do other kind of speaking speaking gigs uh, but primarily where we're there to serve the church we're there to invite people to come to wrestling but hear about the gospel um, and see people get saved and um, and just journey with people um, and, and train them up here and give them the whole package not just the wrestling but employment advice debt advice budgeting mental health support all that yeah. kind of stuff so that's what Brilliant. we're about that's amazing because you've literally ticked every single box about everything that drives me, you know, uh, God, family, wrestling, mental health support, supporting people, teaching, talking to people, studying with people, Bible study, um, and just literally just, uh, and then to top it all off as well, you've got a wrestling school as well, and you're putting on wrestling events. So honestly, there's no word of a lie, about six to eight months ago, the last place he was to work at, the guy there, He's born again, um, sort of helped lead him to the Lord. And he's really, really flourished with it as well. Um, he does it through music. 
but long story short, his dad, his dad was a pro boxer as well, um, from where I am, from Hull. And we said, I said, look, I said, Connor, I said, the Lord's telling me that me and you need to get together to do something, whether it's a, a wrestling slash boxing school, but within mm. with but with a faith orientation as well. So when this goes out, when I get the edit done and you give it the seal of approval, he'll be the first one. I pop it across and say, this guy's already rocking it up in Bradford. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We need to get our skates on for Jesus. So with that being said, then let's touch about your wrestling career. How yeah. did your love of wrestling start before you stepped into the squared circle yourself? For me, it started when I was uh, between the ages of like six to eight, nine year old. Um, I... For those who've heard my, my testimony, my story, I had a pretty rough childhood. Um, and for me, my escape was professional wrestling. It was these larger than life characters. It was the stories. It was the good guys versus the bad guys. It was Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, WrestleMania 10s, like probably one of the first matches I remember seeing. And seeing Shawn Michaels climb the ladder, flicking his hair, and Razor appears out of nowhere and drop kicks it, and he lands nuts first on the rope. and. <laughs> Gets his leg caught and and it's I was an just amazing like, match that man amazing beautiful match. match. Essentially, Shawn Michaels wrestled a ladder and Razor Ramon kind of was a part of it. Um, and <laughs> I was just sold from that moment. I was just sold from that moment. Me and my cousin uh, Tom, we used to play the video games on the PlayStation. We would uh, wrestle at school on the on the fields. We would uh, we would wrestle at home. We'd put mattresses on the floor and be doing moves on each other. Um, and then I got into backyard wrestling, did some backyard wrestling. Yes. Um, and then I uploaded a video to YouTube of my old backyard wrestling, which is still on there and it's shocking. Um, it's terrible. Um, and someone messaged me through that and said, hey, look, I know this training school in Blackburn um, with the lads uh, from Radical Wrestling League, RWL. He said, you should come with me and train. He said, I'm, I'm based up in Bradford. We can travel together because uh, I was in Keefley at the time. So we met right. up and... His name was Kev, um, and we just travelled to, uh, to Blackburn. I got in the ring. I started doing all this stuff, uh, learning how to do it like correctly. So I had a kind of general idea of how to do a twist of fate or a RKO or a frog splash or a rock bottom or a super kick or an F5. I had all these moves in my arsenal, but I, I was just doing them slightly incorrect. I was landing weirdly. My, my footwork wasn't great. I didn't know how to run the ropes, all this kind of stuff. So really... The, the trainers there, Corey and a couple of the other guys said, what was great about me when I came into the wrestling school was I was almost a complete package. Like I knew how to work a crowd. I had a character. Um, I, I could put a match together. I knew how to tell a story. I knew how to sell. Um, I knew how to verbalize. I knew how to, how to kind of work a, work a match. But it just needed to tweak the physical aspect. And that took about six months to get that sorted out um but it's always an ongoing process you're always still learning even now 10 years later i'm still learning new things um but once it got that ready i was on shows and i was doing shows after six months and 10 years later um i've been all over the country i've, I've won championships i've headlined big shows and i've wrestled in front of six people in a working men's club i've done it all mate <laughs> yeah. well you have to though don't you i mean you literally you, you know you, you cut you're sort of cutting your bones aren't you I mean, whether you're wrestling in front of the, just the promoters or whether it's a full mm. house, you know, um, the most important thing is, I'm sure you'll you'll testify to, is working the crowd, whether you've got heat or whether you're getting the cheers, it's apps. You can't be the guy or the woman who sits in the middle of that and doesn't get any reaction. Because to me, when I'm watching wrestling, whether I'm uh, watching an indie show or whether I'm watching something mainstream, there's nothing worse for me as a viewer where someone's giving it their all and there's nothing, there's no interaction with the crowd, that the crowd aren't buying into the, the character or whatever. So in terms of obviously when you were obviously where you said you, you were good at working a crowd, how did you initially kick that off then? Was your heel? Was your face? And what did you do to get a crowd on, uh, you know, either on your back or rooting for you? Um, I, I'll say this to most of my trainees that, um, it's always good to start out as a heel mm. because it's much easier to be hated than it is to be loved. Yeah. Um, and I think there's, there's pros and cons to both, right? So if you were to be a heel and you came out first, which is often what happens, you'll learn the psychology of wrestling. Most of the time, a heel will come out first. Um, 
And your main job is to get everybody in that room to hate you, whether that's through your arrogant body language, whether that's through knocking a drink over, whether that's through shouting in a kid's face and um, threatening to hit a granny. Uh, like there's a there's hundred things you can do. Um, you can get on the microphone and tell them that everybody in Yorkshire sucks um, and that you're from Lancashire. Red Rose, Red Rose. If you're in Yorkshire, you're going to get booed out of the building. Yeah. Vice versa. Whenever I wrestle in Lancashire, I don't tell them where I'm from. If I'm being a baby <laughs> first, because I don't want to get booed. But simple things like that. It's knowing, it's knowing how to turn an audience against you. And all of that is to benefit the baby face that comes in next. Yes. Because if you've got them to hate you enough, no matter who comes through that curtain, they're going to want that person to punch you in the mouth and shut you up. Yeah. So being a heel is really important. Now, for trainees, quite early on, what I say to them is, is to start out with a completely different gimmick and character, probably masked, before they actually get their main character ready. Because working in front of a crowd is very different to working in a training school. There's a lot of stuff you don't necessarily learn until you're in front of a crowd. Because trainees and wrestlers know how to cheer and boo. They know when to cheer and boo. So it's yeah. almost like fake, okay? Yeah. Everything in wrestling is fake, let's be honest. But, but like that crowd reaction isn't genuine. So you don't learn anything. So wear a mask, be a heel, go out, hear a crowd, try and get them to hurt, try and get them against you. And then work with an established baby face that can carry you through the match. Because no, most of the time, a heel would be the one who controls the match. So as a starter, being with an established baby face would be a heel because you'll learn loads through that. And then as you grow and you get ready to bring your proper character in and you then become a baby face, it's then learning how to, how to sell. And, and that's one of the things that a lot of people really struggle with, um, particularly younger guys who are very gymnastics you know they're doing front flips and triple somersaults and whatever yeah. taking canadian destroyers and springing out of them to do a triple super kick flip like i'm not like randy orton totally against dives i i they have their place yeah. but i see some of these young guys bouncing around having taken damage for 20 15 minutes and then they just spring up like nothing's happened and, and i'm like well where's the storytelling where's the selling where's I've the now, sell? yeah absolutely i've I've now lost my train of thought as to what's going on in this match. And now I don't, genuinely don't believe everything you've done before this was real. 100%. And so whatever comes on next, it's going to ruin that for me. Yeah. So I always say to my guys, even now, if they've never been in the ring, sell. If even I'm, I'm, I'm slamming you on a giant crash mat, I want you to sell as though yeah. I have absolutely wrecked your back because yeah. you need to learn that in training before you get into the ring. So it just becomes natural. Um, and I've got a guy here at the school called Chris who's really good at that. Like, he, everyone would be like, whoa, whoa, what's he doing? Have you actually hurt him? I'm like, no, he's just selling. He's just selling. He gets it. <laughs> um, and so the sell as a baby face is what can get the crowd on your side. It's a little subtle body language tells that you give. So uh, one of the things I absolutely hate, I'm on a bit of a tirade here. One of the things I absolutely hate is baby faces at clap. Come on. Yeah, let's start the match with a clap. Clap yeah. for me. Clap for me. Yeah. It feels disingenuous. It if a does. crowd really, if a crowd really wants to cheer for you and clap for you, they will. You shouldn't be forcing it on them straight away. Yeah. So, I'm like, well, how else can you get that rhythmic bang, 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 bang that gets the crowd into start to cheer for you? Okay, so you could be doing it with your shoulders. You could be like, yeah. Okay, you could be doing it with your fist. You can be stomping on the mat. You can be grabbing the ropes and you could like all your body, like Dusty Rhodes used to do it really well. He'd be dancing and jiving. And next thing you know, the crowd's like, yeah, come on, Dusty, yeah, let's go. Yeah. You're on the mat and you're, craw you're crawling up. You're going, bang, grabbing the rope, grabbing yeah. the rope, grabbing. Like Shawn Michaels was a master at that. All yeah. these little tells physically tell the crowd, I need to be clapping and cheering because they hear the rhythm. They see the rhythm. Clap, 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 clap. And then you... And if you don't react to that, then you're missing the trick because they're the ones who are giving you the energy. They're imparting on you their faith and trust. 100%. So if you don't react to that, if you don't fire up from that, then they're not going to do it the second time. They're going to no. feel less and less like it. So, so all these little things, man, like I could talk about this for days, the psychology and the stuff that makes a good wrestler. You've touched on it as well. I mean, you mentioned it earlier as well uh, when we was chatting about the, the psychology of wrestling. Um, and also as well, it's let's not run away from it there is a huge performing art aspect and that's before you take any bumps you know it's yeah. about your character your development how you walk down the ramp how you get into the ring as well mm -hmm. how you um are in the ring while your music's still going on waiting for your opponent or 
flip it another way around, making your opponent wait. No, 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 we're, we're going to max out these full three or four minutes of this theme tune here, kid. You can wait, mm. do you know what I mean? This is all about me now, spotlight's on me. And there is a huge part of that. You mentioned as well, the, the wrestlers who give it all that at the beginning. Mm. How many times do you see it as well um, when a match is, for want of a better phrase, it, it's flat. And then we get the, somebody comes in and starts tapping on the ring to try and get the crowd going. And, and sometimes I watch matches and I just think it might be better if we just get a quicker finish now because some yeah. of the moments yeah. have gone. They've been missed. Those those yeah. sort of, you know, spotlight moments, they've been missed. Mm -hmm. But it's something to reflect back on. And then next time you're in the ring, think, right, we need to try and peak this at another time yeah. within the game. Um, so obviously you've touched upon that. You started off as a heel. Um, and then I'm assuming at some point during this character that you created, we had a face turn. So yep. what was the reaction of that then? So I'm assuming a lot of people where you were going to, they were knowing that, you know, Gaz, Gaz's character is a heel. It's going to get booed. He's going to slag off Yorkshire. He's going to slag off Yank, uh, Lancashire, wherever it may mm -hmm. be. What happened on that night when you turned first? And the build up to it as well, if you can, uh, if you can give us that. Yeah, so it's as with most independent professional wrestlers on the UK scene, there weren't, um, you know, I'm talking 10 years ago now, there weren't a lot of local promotions that held regular events in the same venues with the same fans. Right. Um, so I tried being face a couple of times outside of a regular fan base um, because I was going to different places in like Castleford, Armley. I was traveling out towards, um, oh, I went down to Wales and did a couple of camps in Wales um, and just played around with it. One night I was face, next night I was heel because it was a completely different crowd every time. So it didn't matter if there was no investment either way. So I toyed around with being a baby face um, and kind of called myself, kind of went from Crazy Gaz, which was my original ring name, um, to a more faith based character called Gareth Angel. So that's where kind of the name came from. And I thought, like, it's going to be dark versus light. It's going to be reckless and, and, and stupid versus intelligent and, and admirable. Like, and how that, those two characters are almost completely separate and, yeah. and completely di different. The gear they wore were different. Uh, the entrance music was different, all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of evolving the Gareth Angel character while trying to kind of shut down the crazy Gaz character in certain places. And it all kind of came to a head where... Um, I got into a feud with a group of uh, guys called the Yobs, and they were um, they were turning heel, so almost like a double turn. They were turning heel while me uh, and the guy I was with were going to split up, and then I would turn face. So these 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 lads kind of just beat me down, put me through a table, absolutely smashed me to pieces, and then my tag team partner got more and more upset with the fact that I'd lost the match, um, and then he. And then he just turned on me and attacked me and beat me down and, and just and just beat me up. So then me and him had like a mini feud. And the thing is that this was in Stockton. It was a Stockton of all places for a place right. called Great, Great British Wrestling. And um, he, as soon as he attacked me, all of a sudden, like the fans were then like chanting for me going, Angel, 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 because I changed the name um, beforehand and said, oh, I'm Angel now. And did it quite arrogantly because I was still a heel. Um, and then he was Dynamite uh, Dan, Dynamite Danielson. So we became the Explosive Avengers. That was the tag team name. Right. Um, and when he turned on me and got me in his arm bar and like tried to rip my arm out of my socket and I'm screaming and I'm scratching and crawling, like people were like, starting to cheer for me because I'd been putting up a fight against these yobs who had been attacking people and, and turning heel. And, and when Dan hit me, that was, the, that was it. That was the moment. So then we had like a blood feud where we were chasing each other, beating each other up, and I eventually came out on top of that and then went into a feud with like a Vince McMahon-style character um, who was doing everything he could to shut me down. And wow. that just then built up this, this almost like Stone Cold versus Vince kind of character who was just coming up and coming up and meeting obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and overcoming, overcoming, overcoming. Um, and then it really switched um, in red car. Um, I got into the ring and I sat down CM Punk style, legs crossed. And um, I read out uh, some scripture from Deuteronomy. And um, it's talking about like wearing the faith on your sleeve and painting it on your goal, put, uh, get on your gatepost and on your door yeah. frame, and, and you know meditating on it when you go down to sleep and when you get up in the morning. And so I, I memorize it word for word, um, New Living Translation, because um, it just was a bit more modern language. Yeah, read it like 
rattled it out and said, this is why I live out loud. This is why I fight against injustice. This is why I'm here to stop um, Philip Broughton, this, this character, uh, Philip Alexander, he was called. Um, this is why I'm here to stop you because people like you need to be shut down. And I cannot stand here and believe what I believe about being good and being righteous and having justice and all this stuff. And let someone like you exist within the same world. So I'm here to shut you down and take you out. And that yes. was it. The crowd were like with me all yes. the way. Um, and so from there, that's where the Angel Army kind of fan name came from. You also chant chanting Angel Army. Um, yeah, so that then kind of started from there. That's amazing. Um, and so it, it just kind of steamrolled. And then that's that's kind of where the, the Angel character's pretty much been babyface ever since. Brilliant. Apart from, I think, a two-year run in Blackburn where I was a heel. Um almost like a cult leader style character where I had visions that God had given me before a match. Mm. And then I tell my opponent, um, oh, if you don't do this, this is what I've seen is going to happen. Um, so you just lay down and let me pin you and then I won't break your leg um, because I've seen it in a vision. Right. And then they would refuse, obviously, and then yeah. that would happen. And yeah. then it, I went on a two-year winning streak um, where every match I had a vision. I'm going to tell you the vision, give you an opportunity to avoid it. They don't take it. It happens. And so the fans were then kind of believing, hang on a second, as much as we hate Angel, everything he said has come true and continues to come true. That's amazing, mate. That's some serious character work, is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was in the same venue every single time with the same fans every single time. So it made Brilliant. sense to do it there. 100%. Um, because they they can follow it along. They're not just going to suddenly turn up and be like, oh, what, what's this guy on about? What does he mean yeah. he's had a vision every time it's come true? Um, so it worked. And then we got to a Rumble match, 30-man Rumble, which very rarely happen on independent shows these days because they're very expensive to book. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, we did this whole deal where um, I was coming out number one and I had a singles match earlier in the night and I said to open the show, um, I'm going to be the Alpha and Omega of this Rumble. Um, I've had a vision. I'm going to win it and I'm going to become champion. And there's not a damn thing anybody can do about it because it's God's will, not yours. Um, and that was it. The fans were, they hated me. Guys used to come up and try to attack me through the ropes and, and I was, it was mental. I got slapped by a guy at the bar once. So it was mental. Um, wow. And, and uh, I came in number one, alpha, uh, and lasted a good 20, 25 minutes. Then I got eliminated and everyone was like, ah, oh, in your face, in your face. It's not come true. It's not come true. And, and I'm now freaking out. Like, oh, my vision hasn't come true. My vision hasn't yeah, come true. Yeah. And, and then I stopped and I just kind of went, met a point of just standing there and looking at people going, ah, ah, and kind of, ah, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. And then like ran to the back and everyone's like, what? And then number 30 comes out and it's a guy called Bubba the Butcher Morris, who was one of my like uh, disciples. Right. And um, so he comes stomping out and then I come running out behind him like, whoa, give me your place. And he's like, yeah, you can have it. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So then I come work. out number 30. Alpha, Omega, Omega first and last. Yes. So totally laid it all up, won the Rumble, and um, then that company like shut down. <laughs> oh, like, no, it was so close. Man, that was so a I'm crest a of a wave. Shot. Yeah, that was a crest of a wave, that. I'll tell you what, if, if, if anybody from WWE Creative uh, ever sees this, mate, um, there'd, there'd be a job for you in that because <clears throat> it's hard for me to watch WWE now. I do watch it, you know, and I try and stay impartial as I possibly can. But when I hear somebody who's gone to the lens, working with other people in wrestling who who buy into that story, and then you've gone to the lens over two years to get a buy in mm. from the crowd as well, to the point where people are coming up to you at the bar and giving you a slap, trying to get you through, trying to get at the ropes, uh, through the ropes to get at you. I mean, yeah. like like Bubba Ray said. You cannot buy that kind of heat. There are just certain people that have just got heat. And you've got to have something, haven't you? You need the cheers or you need the heat. But you cannot yeah. be lukewarm. You cannot be no. lukewarm as a wrestler. Because no. I would imagine that if it is lukewarm, it's a very lonely place when you're in that ring and you're not getting any but reaction. Not only is it a lonely place, it just doesn't do you any favours in the long term because you become what some might call a piss break. You know, that people are like, oh, it's this guy. I'm not too bothered. I'm just going to go to the loo now. Yeah. Um, and, and so at GTM, we live stream our events on, on YouTube and Facebook so people can watch them as they're happening. 
I can go back and look at the analytics and see where the dip off was and yeah. see where people weren't watching and see yeah. when people tuned in and when people tuned out um, can see when most of the comments were made and what the comments were said. And, and so you can see that I can look almost real time if I wanted to and see what what's happening. Yeah. Um, so I already know which of my talent, unfortunately, are having the lesser kind of kind of reactions. So for me, as, a, as the promoter, booker, guy who kind of runs the show, it's not up to me to go, right, you're rubbish, Ben Canyon, no. you're gone. It's, it's a work in progress. How can we change that? How can I make sure that almost everybody on my shows has a narrative, has a story arc, either negative or positive, because when you get into the psychology of story arcs, you've got a positive story arc where the character makes a positive change. You've got a negative story arc where they make a negative change. Heels and baby faces can have both of these kind of changes. A heel can have a positive change where they become a face or they overcome something, or they can have a negative change where they lose and fail. Yes. A baby face can do that same. They don't have to swap to be positive or negative. They can do both or, or either. Um, it's how they then come back around, and that's why it's called a story arc, because you yes. come back around. That's so, it, the hero's you, journey, so to speak. You get the hero's wheel yeah. as well and all that lot. And it's and it's a, a pretty standard formula, isn't it, in, in a lot of things, yeah. including wrestling. You, know, you can pick any films, Harry Potter, Star Wars, you know, Indiana Jones, et cetera, et cetera. You know, any of your Marvel or DC characters. Your main character always has a beginning and then halfway through has a crisis point or a dip mm -hmm. and then a, a rebirth, you know, yeah. a bit like yeah. those of us who were born again. You're born, exactly. you walk through life with the veil, although you don't know that you're blinded. You hit a, a, a serious crisis point or crisis points and you think there's no, that there's more to, there's more to me than this. And like we know as Christians who've been born again, your rebirth is, this is who I am now, rip out my, mm. my heart of stone, give me a new heart, Lord, you know, repentance of sins, get born again with the Holy Spirit, and you're back up again. And I would imagine it's a similar kind of approach to when your guys are having a bit of a dip. It's like, you know, it's okay, we can, we can still turn this around. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where, that's where you, you've always got to have hope. You've always got to have hope for for the characters that you portray on the screen, you've got to have hope for the guys who are here at training, who are wanting to become wrestlers. They're going to have obstacles in their life. They're going to have stuff that comes up, whether that's personal issues with their family or addiction to, to drugs or alcohol, or, you know, even something as simple as personal hygiene is, yeah. is a constant battle for some of these guys. Um, and for me, as their coach, it's not for me to be like lambasting them and going, well, this is terrible and it's shocking, you're gone. It's for me to go, okay, look, We've identified this as a problem. How do we fix it together? How do we fix it as a group? How do we fix it by referring you to something? How do we get you tied in with the right people to, to help you overcome whatever issue it is that you've got going on? Because I can say as a Christian, if it wasn't for other Christians and other organizations getting involved in my journey at different points, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, I hadn't done all of this on my own. You know, Regardless of bringing Christ in and Christ being the one who saves us, of course. You need your faith but, builders. You need those other people who have sold their soul, just sold their soul. Kind of well, that's probably not the right phrase. Um, who who have who have given their lives to Christ and said, "Use me, use me for the kingdom." Yeah, and they're the ones who are out there evangelizing, meeting people, working in charities, out on the streets. Be just just even even just good families, just being yeah. good examples, just living good holy lives. Like those are the kinds of people who share, who like change the culture. Um, they affect the, the spheres of influence that they're in and, th and they become the people that you turn to in times of crisis so that they can point you not towards themselves as the savior, but towards Christ who's their savior. 100%. And so all of that is, is, is just one of those things that I wish, unfortunately, I wish every Christian would be like that. 100%. It's not it is. man, I, when you talk about lukewarm wrestling, uh, lukewarm wrestling, there's nothing that grinds my gears more than a lukewarm Christian who's happy to just sit at church on a Sunday and do nothing Monday to Friday. You mean like, the not to God on. crowd? Yeah. Oh, yeah. amen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mickey Mouse yeah. Christians. Just put that That's on, it. on a Sunday. This I can tell nice. you that I believe in Jesus. Okay, then. I don't need you to tell me. I need mm -hmm. you to just, just, just to show people. You don't even have to show yeah. it to me, but you need to mm -hmm. show it to other people who don't know Christ. Because when they say, I don't know if it worked for you guys, but it's certainly in my journey, it took me years and years and years. Like, <clears throat> I'll say that 
I switched my life over to God back in 2006, about three months before my eldest son was born. Um, but man, it took years before I actually got it from there yeah. to there. Do you know what I mean? And then from there to out there. Mm -hmm. It took years. And I tell everybody, everybody who comes up to me, if I hear people say, oh, I'd love a challenge. You want a challenge? Become a Christian. You ain't going to get a bigger challenge ever for the rest of your days on earth than being a Christian. Trust me. And, no. and it, but like I say, I mean, this, you know, the whole being born again thing, <clears throat> I genuinely thought I was. I was blinkered to it. And when you are truly born again, I don't know if the same thing happened with you or people that you know in this situation, but even things like the kind of music I was listening to, it just didn't have the same. It just didn't feel right listening to it. So I got more and more into faith music. Like at the moment, the big thing at the moment is gospel, gospel music, especially mm. original Black Roots gospel music, you know. Um, but even like to certain sort of films and TV shows that I'd normally be into, I'm looking at them. I look at them of like the last few few years and I'd be like, don't feel right watching this. And it's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. conviction. It's like, yeah, because you're a different creature now. That's why I don't feel right anymore. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, me and my wife call it bad juju. We call yeah. it bad juju. We'd be watching a program and she'd be like, I'm getting bad juju from this. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. See That's what you mean. it. You can you can watch something and it, you can start, you know, like I watch, a, there's a, a guy in America uh, who I've been watching for years, a guy called Andrew Womack. And uh, he says, oh, it's very easy. He said, if you want to, he says, you can put your Bible down, put the TV on and watch As the Stomach Turns all day long, if you want to. Do you know what I mean? And that's how sometimes it, that's the best way I can sort of describe it. It's like the certain music and lyrics that I listen to and, you know, and films and TV shows that I watch, it just feels like, it feels a bit ill. It makes me a bit, almost mm -hmm. a bit ill. It, mentally, I start thinking. And then if I, if I try and ignore that, and persist with it because I know being born again, it's like, no, Dave, I'm telling you as your Lord, you don't need this. It, it ain't going to be any benefit to you or those around you. So just switch it off and watch something else. And I don't know if that's sort of something that you or the people that you've known being born again have had similar experiences where literally slowly, but surely everything around you, you see the world in different, but you also look at the world and listen to the world in a different way as well. Yeah, I, I would I would say I'm probably both sides of the same coin with this um, because I grew up with heavy metal rock. Um, I grew up with um, I was in I was in the goth scene. I was same here, like, man. Same here. Moshers, we used to call us moshers back. Moshers, moshers um, and grebs, and I was in bands and, and all that jazz. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even even today, even today, someone posted a video from from oh man 2003 2004 of me in a bright red vest with a mohawk with rubbish imitation jeff hardy armbands on <laughs> diving off a, diving off the stage to a punk band That's and it. um <laughs> it's just an old video tip that they converted to digital put it on wow. put it on facebook and i was That's like oh hot. my goodness <laughs> um, but like i watched that and then i'm like oh man I remember what it was like to be there. I remember the yeah. culture. I remember what it was like. Everyone's taking drugs and everyone's sleeping together. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and obviously they're the negative aspects of it. The positive aspects of it is a great community of people who were there to yeah, look after 100%. each other. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll agree with you on that. Hundred percent. You've got, you've got to, you've got to wear both up because yeah. the, the, you can on a pendulum. You can go way off to the other side. Okay. okay. You can be like, right. I tell you what. I'm never going to listen to Slipknot again. I'm never going to watch the TV. I'm never going to watch you know, um, this particular pro type of program. I'm not going to go into this particular place. I'm Horror not going to go into a yeah. ever again. Yeah. I'm going to uh, abstain from alcohol. I'm going to abstain from coffee. I'm going to, you know, get my tattoos removed. I'm going to get my piercings removed. I'm going to cut That's my hair. That's extreme, like, isn't it? Man? You could go Leviticus and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. And you become you could become a monk and live in your backyard brewing, brewing beer for the community. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but thankfully, um, we have a new covenant. We have a new covenant. Well, there we go. There we go. Where, where to be? Where to be? Um, in the world, but not of it. Of the and world. So, yeah. So this is this is the issue that I think a lot of people miss, um, and why people call me a, call me an evangelist. I, I would say I'm just I'm just a Christian, just doing what God's called me to do. People say you're an evangelist. I will walk into a bar and I will chat with people at a bar and I'll have a beer with people at a bar and I'll yeah, chat yeah. about wrestling and I'll listen to some rock music because I know that that is 
horrible stuff. But guess what? Where are the people who need saving? They're in the bars listening to horrible Of course stuff. they are. What did Jesus West do? stood outside. Sat and drank West... and, and ate with the sinners. Exactly. Exactly. So if we go way off on the other side of the pendulum, yeah. we'll never meet those people. We'll 100%. never share the gospel with them and they'll continue to be in crappy situations. It's why I love all these organizations that are out there meeting the poor, meeting the needed, dealing yeah. with homelessness, dealing with debt, dealing with unemployment, dealing with mental health issues, being Massively. in the pubs, being around men's groups, being around women's groups, doing knit and natter with the grannies, doing toddler groups, whatever, to engage with the community, engage with people. Because it's all ministry at the end of the way. day. Absolutely. It's all, it's all ministry. Whether you're speaking to one person or a thousand people, it's yep. ministry, isn't it? When you're making a difference, that person's life. And it took me a few years to get my head around that. But you don't have to. You see, I was, I was, I was brought up, and this is just my own ignorance. Not, not any particular bad churches that I went to, or you know, sort of lukewarm churches and things like that. Just my own ignorance that you had to be behind the pulpit to minister to people. And you no. don't. And you look back and you think. I can minister to anybody on a text message. I can minister mm. to anybody online through a podcast and they can minister to me chatting with my mates. I could even be sat at work knowing full well that none of the people around me have certainly ever said to me, oh, by the way, I've, I've got faith. And I, can, mm. and I can say it proudly, you know, like, like you know, it, it was said in Romans, you know, you, you know Paul says that I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not yeah. ashamed. You know, it was given to first the Greeks, then the Jews. And, you know, and, and you know, and it's there's, there's no embarrassment now about me being able to walk high and high and proud and say, yeah, what are you doing this weekend? I'm off to church on Sunday. Oh, wow. Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to church. What, what, what's that like? What church do you go to? And all of a sudden people start asking you open questions. You know, whether they genuinely want to latch on to the answers or not, it's just like, well, I'm committed now. I better ask him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, you know, yeah. so I don't know if, if, like, you find it easier being in those sort of circles, because I do. I mean, at church, everybody's there for the same thing. We love God. We're on our journey with God. We're all at different stages in our journey with Christ. Yeah. And when you're out of that church situation, it's just like, well, now I am the you know, the sort of soldier of God, so to speak, in, in yeah. this war against the devil. So it's like, yeah, come at me, ask you questions, and light chat. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, so I'm part, I'm part of a uh, Church of England church. Um, I'm hoping to become a vicar um, and to, to plant my own church, um, mainly because I think church can be different and I think church can, can be a little bit more heavy metal, can be a little bit more um, masculine at times and can be a little bit more appealing to people like me. Because I'm like, yeah. I want to appeal to people like me. Um, I, I would say that, that what people misunderstand about church is we gather, and this is going way back to Acts in the early church, we gather to encourage and, and to, to be together, to worship together, to give the glory to God, to come together as a community of people, to be with God and with each other. But at the end, we're challenged, we're changed, and we're sent back out for the rest of the week to yes. continue to change the world around us if yeah. we're only ever coming to sundays to meet up with the mum that we know or the dad that we know uh, to put the kids and give us a two hours break while we listen to someone give us a 20 minute sermon on something we're not going to pay attention to yeah so we can have a little sing song and a dance about how jesus is my boyfriend like yeah. no I, I i i i will never be a part of a church where i go there to just sit there on a sunday get fed and go home and do nothing with it because that is pointless 100 um, percent. so it needs to be a place where the table is set. We're coming together. We're going to praise together. We're going to pray for each other, pray for the world. And it, we're going to build each other up. We're going to teach each other. We're going to learn from each other. But we're going to get challenged. We're going to change. And we're going to go back out into the world. And we're going to make a difference. And when we come back the following week, hey, we might be bringing somebody else with us. And they're going to start that journey too. And we're going to grow and grow and grow. And then 100%. when we move again, we're doing the exact same thing. We, we, we're, we're engaging in ministry we are engaging and that, you can minister at work you don't have to be in a christian environment to minister to people 100%. like my wife let me tell you about my wife right a lot of people go oh it's the gas show okay i'm the one up front most of the time i'm doing tv and radio i'm doing wrestling i'm doing all this other stuff right i'm an ambassador for domestic abuse charity i write articles for sorted men's magazine i'm all over the place right shocking yeah. amount of stuff i do 
I couldn't do an ounce of that without my wife's support, love and compassion. 100%. And an yeah. Amazing woman, God. I'll give her props for that. But I'll tell you even something that's even better. Is that my wife, she, she's got fibromyalgia. It's a chronic pain condition. And she can have days where she can't get out of bed. She can have other days where um, she's just in pain and she's fatigued and she can't do anything. But she is one of the most, um, well, she's tough, man. She's just tough. She, she grits it and she, gets, she guts it out and she meets with all these other mums who are local and they get together and they let the kids play together and they talk and they do life together. And, and you know, they're not Christian, but she's ministering to them. She doesn't, she doesn't ever turn down an opportunity to offer prayer. She doesn't ever turn down an opportunity to invite them to a church building for a kid's group um, and for them to hang out together and go for a coffee and talk about the tough stuff in life and to share her faith. Even with all the struggles and pains that she's going through, she still doesn't pass up that opportunity. That's and when she comes to church on a Sunday, she can sometimes, you know, unfortunately be sat there with, with a three-month-old baby breastfeeding and a toddler running around in a room that's pretty much empty because there's not many mums and kids at our church and she sat there going this needs to change either the space needs to change or i need those mums and those kids who i'm meeting with to come and be here too and and that that's who she is she you know she won't say she's an evangelist but she definitely is yeah um, and, and and she is just just a, a woman of god she's powerful in every way she is prayerfully dedicated she reads a bible she worships and she's got a beautiful voice and, and she just she's a great mother and she's an amazing wife and i can't give her props enough um and that's why i married yeah, her that's why that. i love her all yeah, those qualities man. what what attracted me to her she's just she's just an amazing woman but yeah, she man. still she still will share her faith and will share her struggles and will be yeah. open and honest with people. if we were all like that my goodness my goodness, the world would be a better place. Ma- I'll tell you ma- now, we massively, because I've, I've, I've got a wife like that myself. She will just, I mean, you know, you know, it is. The men go out to work, and, you know, my wife is, she worked for years and years and years and years. And our youngest son, when he was born, um, he, he's born, oh, Josh was absolutely amazing, is a complete credit to us, and is an absolute gift from God, as is my oldest son, Alfie. Our Josh was born with Down syndrome, and then later he, um, we found out he had a diagnosis of autism as well. He's at a mainstream school thriving. You know, if we listen to the secular world of how to treat people like that, um, it'd be going back to the dark ages. The, the, the secular world doesn't have an absolute scooby-doo on how to do that. They, 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 they see the diagnosis and they overshadow everything. So my wife went, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to let another parent go through with this. So in whole, first ever um it, well it, it's still going on now but she's come away from it now because she's done what she needs to do with it she created the first ever care pathway for children and adults with down syndrome in the whole come on come on do you know what i mean pioneer pioneer you, and you don't do that without faith and you don't do that without that's god not. because that yeah. is a battle i mean that's that's a seed that you need to plant on your own because no one else has planted that crop before and you need strong people around you and she's a strong woman man and you know what i mean and you know the amount of work that she does and you know she's got a faith as well i I can i can completely understand your love and adulation for your wife because Mm. i've got exactly the same in my house as well and as we say in joshua as well and as for me in my house we will serve the lord amen and that's what we do do you know what I mean? Everything that we do, my first thought in the morning, my last thing at night is God. Even if I'm not like, I've got songs in my head about God and everything. You know, it's a man alive. Since like going through mental health, and I spoke with it with this when Emma came onto the podcast, you know, I vowed no man or woman or anything in this world would ever get me to that state ever again. Yeah. Now that I've got faith, I cast all my cares on the Lord. And it tells me not my, for my heart not to be troubled because mm. anything this world's got, well, yeah, I know, but I created the world. I'm a lot bigger than that. And I'm in your corner. Do you know what I mean? And when I'm for you, who can be against you? And when you, and it's okay reading the words like we touched upon earlier in the podcast and saying them out loud, you need to believe in the words. You need to have faith. You need to manifest it as well in your life so that other people can go, dude, you're not that guy you was a few years back. Do you know what I mean? What's changed? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what's changed. Yeah. 
Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. guys, obviously, I'm conscious of time, mate. I mean, we've so. we've talked and we've waxed lyrical about wrestling and about the Lord and about family as well. And this is why I do this podcast, man. It, it, you know, I don't get any financial gain out of it. I just yeah. love being ministered to and to minister to others. At the moment, then, in terms of mainstream wrestling, Where's your love at at the moment with mainstream? What are you watching? Who are you rooting for? Who do you think is absolutely just, yeah, I could watch him or her week after week? Right now, Roman Reigns, man, he is on absolute fire and has been for such a long time. Um, I I think everything he's doing is great. I'm a big fan of Roman, big fan of of Brock um, and this new kind of baby face Brock we're seeing. (laughs) Um, Some interesting. Some Mike Tam Brock as well. Mike Tam Brock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Doesn't need Paul Heyman. Doesn't need uh, doesn't need wise, a wise counsel and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Uh, but no, I, I I love it. I love it. What what Roman what Roman has done is he's elevated himself, Paul, the Universal Championship, which desperately needed it. Yeah, um, his brother Usos along. He he is he he's been booked well. And this is the thing: is that if you want someone to be dominant, they don't lose every other week. They oh. win and they win consistently. And then yeah. they become a threat and a challenge. Um, Brock was already a threat and a challenge, but Roman really needed to be reestablished. Um, and I think the heel turn for him has been very timely and, and has worked very well for him. So Roman, I'm, I'm a very big fan of. Um, I'm a fan of MJF in AEW. Oh. I think his promo work is phenomenal. Um, Gold. And I think he's still so young. He could, he could, be, he could be something big in years Imagine to come. Imagine him in 10 or 15 years' time. Yeah, yeah. When 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 he's got a legacy where he can back up what he says, he's going to be amazing. He 100%. he reminds me of um of like a mix between a young John Cena and a young CM Punk. Like he's got this edge to him. Yeah. But if you booked him well and you got ten years down the line, he could go toe to toe on that mic with anybody. And I love that Cena can still do that even today, and, yeah. and he can tear people apart. But like, yeah, I, I think so. MJF, big fan of him. MGF um, and, and bearing in mind as well, just just touch upon MGF. The guy hasn't even had a belt on him. Didn't need it. Doesn't need it. Doesn't, Doesn't need, need it. a belt. When you're that good on the mic and you're that nasty in the ring as well, you know, you don't need to put a belt on people, do you? No. To make them no. to be like the top, like the pillars, as they call it in AW, um, the pillars of the company. So, yeah, you've got MJF. Anybody else sort of uh, on your radar in terms of mainstream? Um, I would say um, I'm a big fan of Becky Lynch. I think yeah. um, my, my wife loves her. Um, she thinks she's great. Um, just again, just the switching from heel to baby face, continually evolving and changing. Um, great on the mic. Um, decent match. She has decent matches when she's got decent opponents. Yes. Um, she, she has had a few stinkers in her time, but um, she she's very good. Um, I think uh, if I were to switch to the other side again, Britt Baker is doing amazing in AEW. Um, she's doing really well. Um, I want to see Tessa Blanchard come back, um, irregardless yeah. of, of the controversy that surrounded her. Absolutely, she's yeah. Wasted, sat on the bench. Massively. Um, so she, she's really good. Tag team wise, the acclaimed again, great on the mic. Um, really entertaining, uh, but fantastic in the ring. Um, Street Profits, big fan of Montez Ford. Um, he's a guy I see uh, who, who could be somebody in years to come. Um, always as, preaching as the Lord as well on Twitter. Always is, preaching the is. Lord as well. Yeah, always. really athletic guy. Really, really good in the ring yeah. as well. Yeah, and, and and a sleeper talent, I think, for people to keep an eye on, um, I would say is Austin Theory. Um, he, he's got the body. He's got the look. I think he's being booked a bit poorly right now, but he's I'd still agree. quite young, and, and you can you can wash that stink off down the line. Um, but if he if he turned it because I watched him in Evolve before he came to WWE and thought right, this guy yeah. is um, and I think yeah, keep an eye on him because if if WWE get it right with him, they could have. He, I mean, just look at his body shape. He is John Cena. His arms yeah. and his chest, the way he walks. He, he just reminds me of John Cena. If you give him, and John Cena was a dud when he first started, right? He wasn't. He was, great. yeah. Um, but Austin is is technically a better wrestler now than John Cena ever was. So if we can if we can keep him fit and healthy and mm-hmm. give him some decent booking and build him, um, he could be another great great talent, both heel and face. I can see him doing both really well. Um, and he, he's surrounded by great talent who can teach him well within WWE. Um, so I think I think he's definitely one to keep an eye on as well. 
I'd agree. I mean, the storyline with the chasing around the golden egg thing in, in McMahon's office and all that jazz, I, I just I couldn't get on board with that because I'd seen what he did in NXT and I thought this 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 guy doesn't need um I'm the you know illegitimate son of Vince McMahon for a few months. He just needs to go yeah. on there. And I think once we drop all this selfie and whatever they call it, man, I can't even stand that phrase, mate. But I, I, I think I once think they stop that and they give him like a serious run at something, yeah, then I yeah. think I we'll can see, see the selfie thing being 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 positive if it's booked well. This is the issue. It's like what's being booked well? It's not the selfie thing. The selfie thing I think is great. Um, I think if you book, if you, I'm going to get into my creative kind of minefield here. <laughs> if you if you did that well with the selfie and didn't do it every match, doesn't need to be done every match, but did it when it mattered and when it was important, um, then you could do really well with that. Um, what what the issue is is that you've got him, um, unfortunately linked to Vince McMahon, who isn't that relevant anymore, doing True. silly stuff, and then he's going to wrestle a commentator, and he's become like a like a punching bag. It's an uh, abysmal book in that for me for WrestleMania. It really, it, it, it just, it doesn't do, it doesn't do him any favors. It, it doesn't. doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and, and so like that, that's no good. When they had him with Seth Rollins, um, what, two years ago now, um, I, I saw that being something positive. He, he would have yeah. learned a lot from Rollins. He would have learned a lot from Buddy Murphy. Um, I thought that was, was a good spot for him. Um, but then that just fell apart and he went back to NXT and then came back with this with the stuff going on. Um, he's he's tangoed with Brock Lesnar, got F five off of Elimination Chamber. Yeah, like, that's going to stick with him for for the rest of his career. If he yeah. gets his selfie thing down and he can cut a half decent promo and he can work in the ring, put him in there with some wrestlers who are going to test him for 20, 25 minutes, but give him the ability to show that he can work a match and he can wrestle and he can go toe to toe with some of these better wrestlers. Put him in there with Seth. Put him in there with um, I'm trying to think on on WWE who's up there. Randy. Put him in there with Riddle. Put him in yeah. there with um, some of these guys who could work these riddles really impressed me because he genuinely makes me laugh on his promos. Yeah, no, he's great. He's and great. the the yeah. chemistry between him and Orton. I mean, I've, I've, I've got to say, I'm one, I'm one of these people. I've, I've never been a big Orton fan. I, I liked him when he was in Evolution, um, but I, I think as a as an actual wrestler, I think he's quite static. I think he's a bit two dimensional. I think he's quite predictable. But putting him with Riddle where you know full well there's some sort of mentorship going on behind the scenes as well with those two. Mm. It's just the absolute odd couple, and it's brilliant yeah. because it works, and it's not trying to be funny. It's just funny because you would never get Orton talking like Riddle any more than you would get Riddle being a serious individual like Orton, but it just yeah. works. And, and then when they eventually do the heel turn, you're invested. Mm. And that's, that's long term booking. That's one of the biggest issues with WWE. There is no long term booking. No. If you look at the CM Punk and MJF story that they told over what five months, six months, yeah, that the went photographs and all that, you know, it was class. When he was on Rosie O'Donnell and he was like five years old and he was saying, I'm going to be a wrestler, like that whole story and then tying it in with with MJF cutting old CM Punk promos against CM Punk. Yeah. And CM Punk bringing in his stuff with Raven and bringing in his stuff that he'd done previously and, and tying it in with the you can't see me, man, and all alluding to all this stuff just showed how great they were in the mic with very little physical confrontation. Yeah. It was all storytelling. It was all mic work. That's why MJF is very good. That's why CM Punk was very good back in his day. He yeah. wasn't the best wrestler, let's be honest. No. But he could talk a good talk and you bought what he was saying. So if you get that with, with, with MJF, if you were to add in some phenomenal wrestling and a really good long-term story and put him in there with some of the best in the world, then you are just rubbing MJF up. You are shining him up. You are building Absolutely. him to eventually become a top-level talent. And the same could be done with Riddle. The same could be done with MJF, uh, with, um, with Austin, Austin Theory. Theory. Yeah. But there needs to be long-term planning in place. They've just gone WrestleMania. We want Austin Theory on the card. We want Pat McAfee to do something. Stick them together for Vince McMahon. In. What's going to happen after WrestleMania? Pat goes back to doing commentary again. Exactly. Riddle, Riddle, there's uh, no stepping know, um, stone. There's absolutely there's no zero stepping, stepping stone. You need to think what's next. It always needs to be what's next because if your characters are sat around doing nothing, they become lukewarm. You don't know where they're going to go. Finn Balor, my goodness, that boy has been oh, up and down. Left he's and right, been dragged right, all and over. And how amazing is he as a talent? Uh, massively wasted. But again, like they just haven't had that long-term story arc for him. No. And for me as a booker and promoter, 
I've got, without spoiling things, I've got stories on my shows that I've already planned out six, seven, eight months to a year ahead. Absolutely, man. Um, You've got to plant that seed and just sit back and just let it grow, aren't you? You can't just, you know... And things will happen. Things will organically happen that make you go, hmm, maybe yeah. I need to change this now. Yeah, this character's absolutely. got over. This has changed. The crowd are reacting to this differently to what I expected. Um, an injury might happen. Someone might retire. Yeah. Whatever. Circumstances change. But if you've got that long-term story in mind and every now and then you scramble to change something, your whole product is going to make so, so much more sense. You're going to book better. All of the ships rise on a rising tide. Yeah. If everybody's working together and everyone's building up to this, whatever. And everyone understands their role and understands their place on the card. Not everyone can be world champion. Not everyone's going to open the show. Some people are going to job. Like You just yeah. need to, if everyone's on board, everyone's on team, and we all understand where we're going, then it all makes sense. And, and if I can keep everyone together, all heading in the right direction to facilitate whatever story we need to tell down the line, um, you'll see that through the shows, that, that, that each show builds on the story, builds on the story, builds on the story. And the turns and swears will come. So, yeah, check us out and see what we're doing. Really look forward to it, man. <laughs> Before, I'm going to give you the opportunity to plug, uh, yeah, sure. you know, GT Ministries. I just want to say the website is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of the I best. That from scratch. <laughs> is that you I, as I well? I've done website. all that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, looked I at that and I was saying to Emma, I said, it looks like there's some serious wedge being thrown at this website, but you built that from scratch. I built that from scratch. Yeah. Honestly, guys, when Gaz gets to plug it shortly, just get on it. It is the most phenomenal faith and wrestling website you're probably ever going to see. It's just absolutely brilliant. Literally, from the homepage onwards, you're hooked. You're literally hooked. I mean, I was jumping all over it, like thinking, man, I love this, like, guys running around and, like, cheering to the crowd and, like, there's wrestling moves going on in the background while I'm just looking at the home page and I'm clicking on something else and I'm seeing all the up-to-date information. It's don't take my word for it. It's phenomenal. But guys, this is a question <laughs> I always ask anybody when I'm talking about wrestling when I've got wrestling in the, in the in the context. So congratulations. You've managed to get yourself uh as a captain of a survivor series team against mine. And you can pick okay. any wrestler, any four wrestlers who've gone, gone to be with the Lord, who are still active or retired, you've got a okay. choice, men or women, who do you go for? I'm not saying mine until you've told me yours. Hmm. Okay. So um number one would be Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Underdog, always fights up. He's been in many situations in Survivor Series teams where he's been the last guy standing and still managed to take a few out. Um, second one I would pick up be Randy Orton. Um, holds the most um, lone Survivor uh, titles ever. He's a solid main eventer, uh, world champion, fantastic hand. Um he would do very well in most Survivor Series teams and has done and has a proven track record. Um, I would have Brock Lesnar. Because why wouldn't you? <laughs> if you could have anybody, I'd have Brock Lesnar on that team and I'd have him in there first and just be like, Brock smash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then the fourth, um, the fourth I would choose, um, well, it's a tough one. Um, oh. Daniel Bryan, yeah, Brian Danielson, whatever you yeah, call him. Again, another, another plucky underdog who, who would be able to deal with the more faster opponents if there were some. Um, him and Sean would be like the lightweight wrestlers. Randy would be the vet with, with the proven track record and Brock would be just the, the meathead who just goes in there and just wrecks everything. <laughs> so right then. I'd be, I'm my, gonna... I'd be my four. That's five series teams, normally five. Would I be the fifth? You'd be the fifth, of course. I'd You're be the, the captain. Darth Angel. Yeah, Gareth Angel. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'd be the I'd be the fifth on mine, like, but well, I'd, I'd I'd be I'd be in the team, but trust me, I'd be uh, I'd be tagging out as soon as I tagged in uh, every single time. <laughs> um, on mine, then just just to count to yours, I'd have Brett just to get that heat with Sean again. Um, so, you've yeah. got Brian oh, Danielson Brett and in Brian there. Brian Danielson or oh, Brett and Brian or oh, could, could you imagine, imagine that? Their but I'm going to chuck AJ Styles in there. And rub that up a little bit as well. Um, you also said uh, Brock Lesnar. Um, mm. On that one, I'm going to go Kurt Angle because I think Angle Kurt could be, yeah, yeah, technical ability on there. And yeah. um, for no controversial reason, 
um, purely because I went to see, I, I saw him live against Kurt Angle in a no storyline match, just an exhibition match. And at the time, pound for pound, the two most amazing technical wrestlers at the time, Chris Benoit. Yeah, yeah. And that would be massive. I was, I was toying with Benoit or do I go Eddie Guerrero? But I think, you know, when if you I've said got... that originally, I thought you'd go with Guerrero. I thought that's where you were leaning. Yeah, um... no, I, I, I was toying. Um, just depends what day you catch me, guys. Do you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> on that as well, brother, um, before I'm, um, you know, before I get you to plug it, would you mind just praying us out? Yeah, sure, of course. Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, Lord, for this time together. Um, thank you for, uh, yeah, the Wrestling With Faith podcast. It's, uh, it's bringing these two worlds together. Um, well, three, if you include the mental health, and it is giving uh, people a platform to share about their life, about their wrestling journey, and it shall appeal to so many people who can come on, listen to a bit about wrestling, listen to a bit about mental health, but hear about um, this ever, ever present God who is there for us and is with us and is in the battles and is there to, to bring us new and everlasting life, Lord. So we just thank you that whoever's watching this, um, that they've come here for a reason, they've come here to hear about some of the stuff we've got to say, but that they come away, Lord, um, thinking about you, that they come away thinking about what a life with you could look like, Lord. And for those of us who are Christians who are walking with you, that they come away encouraged, that they come away uh, challenged and being able to go back to their day-to-day life with a new, uh, invigorated um, energy around being salt and light in their, in their, in their places of, of, of work, in their families, in everything that they do, Lord. Um, so, yeah, we bless us all with, with health, uh, bless us all with um, your Holy Spirit, Lord, as we go back to our day-to-day lives. But, um, yeah, we just thank you for this time in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful that, guys. And where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them as well. Amen. Guys, plug and promote everything yeah. out of what you're doing and where we can find it. Cool. So that badass website he was talking about, that yes. is gtministries.co.uk. That's gtministries.co.uk. We're on all the social media channels, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, just search at GT Ministries UK. So you'll find they're all the same. They're all the same. Keep it uniform. Uh, we are on YouTube as well. Uh, GT Ministries on YouTube. You see all of our events on there. But most of the stuff that you want to find, you can find on the website. It links back to all the social media. It links to all the events. Um, and if you're local to Bradford, um, I know Hull's not too far out. We've got people who come to the shows from Hull. One of the trainees is from Hull. Um, come, to, come to see us at our shows. We've got Wrestling Church, April 23rd. We're going to have baptisms. We're going to do the 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 story of Jesus going in the tomb and being resurrected, but through a wrestling match. We've got a world title fight. Uh, we're going to have uh, some heavy metal worship. Uh, it's all kicking off. Uh, come and be a part of that. The BBC will also be coming to film that for a documentary, Cheeky Cheeky, going out later in the year. So come along to that. If you want to find me, I'm Gareth Angel. Um, you'll find me online. Again, all the social media channels. Um, you'll find me at the gathering with Christian Vision for Men in Swindon later this year, doing a bar fight. Um, that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, find me. Just ch- look me up. You'll see me. I'm everywhere. Uh, search for Gareth Angel Wrestler and you, you'll you'll see my stuff on Google. Simple awesome. Find. And all the links, I'm going to get as many links as I possibly can get my hands on to put those on the YouTube description as well. Guys, another thing as well, mate, you're going to have to invite me down so you can show me how to take bumps as well, mate. And yes, mate. And we'll film it for the podcast. How about get that? Get it. How about that? Yeah, we'll get that, mate. We'll, we'll, we'll have a chat. Uh, we'll have a chat on Twitter, I think, about that um, no, after it. outside of the podcast. So it just leaves me to say thank you very much. You've been uh, watching and or listening to Wrestling With Faith. Uh, we are available, as I say, on YouTube as well as Spotify and a host of other podcast um, services as well so thank you very much for your time today Gaz and uh, God bless you and all the very best and thanks to you folks for listening and watching